Finally tonight, Ruthie Zell has a story about a place that plays a central role in St. Louis's history from frontier days to the Civil War and, well, for World War II veterans, Jefferson Barracks is the place where it all started. This is the World War II medical equipment and you can see they, they electrified the uh, drill <laughs> during the war. <laughs> These are just a few of the World War II artifacts yeah, preserved at one of the museums in Jefferson Barracks in South St. Louis Civil County. War. Especially the, the tooth pullers. <laughs> Museum volunteer and World War II veteran Winfred Kenner remembers the day he and other inductees were transported from the draft board to the barracks for their first day as servicemen. The draft board was the Jefferson Graboids. They picked us up on a streetcar and dropped us off at the front gate. And we marched in down to the, the infirmary or whatever you call it, down on the riverfront, down there by the train station. They stripped us of our civilian clothes, <laughs> gave us our shots and new uniforms and <laughs> a barracks bag full and had to walk up the hill after we got our shots and everything. But I was only here for four or five days uh, on KP, I think, the whole time. So I don't remember much about the barracks itself. I've been past Jefferson Barracks, I guess, most of my life. Used to walk the railroad tracks down here to Cliff's Cave. Bill Pilger, who fought in the Battle of the Bulge, remembers a lot about his few days at Jefferson Barracks. It was a sight. Now, I got here after the tents were all torn down. I got to sleep in one of the brand spanking new barracks. You'll hear more about the barracks and tents in a few moments from museum curator Mark Kohlbaum. Well, it's been a lot of he gave me a tour of Jefferson Barracks, starting with what is now the visitor center. In 1920, it became a tank repair station, which is why the ramp. And then in 1941, when they made this area into reception and induction center, 1772, and began inducting people for what they figured was going to be a conflict that the United States was involved in, World War II, this was where the people who were inducted here, their parents, wife, sister, family, could come and meet them on weekends. Jefferson Barracks was established in 1826 and named in honor of former president Thomas Jefferson. It was a replacement for the first American military post west of the Mississippi, Fort Bell Fountain in North St. Louis County. It wasn't in a very good spot, uh, very wet, damp, so in 1832 they started looking for a new location. And Jefferson Barracks is high but it still has the river for water supply. The river is the main mode of transportation back then, the fastest. So it gave all that. You can still see we have a lot of timber around, so a lot of building materials. The limestone for these buildings was quarried right over the hill here. So you had all sorts of building materials. The village of Carondelet, in French, Vide Poche, as it was known then, Empty Pockets, uh, offered to donate or give them the land from their common fields. So the price was right too. Army troops and supplies headed for service in conflicts dating back to the Mexican-American War gathered at Jefferson Barracks. It was known as the country's first so-called infantry school of practice, or in today's terms, a basic training center. During the Civil War, right over here was the Civil War Hospital, which was the largest hospital west of the Mississippi. It deteriorated in the 1906 they built a new hospital and there was a whole complex with 20 some buildings and during World War II there were 150 some officers and over 1200 enlisted people assigned to that hospital complex. In September of 1940, 15 months before the U.S. entered World War II, Jefferson Barracks became the first basic training center for the Army Air Corps. In addition to the Army Air Corps training in the reception center, we had WACs come in in 1942, and they were the WAAC at the time, Woman's Army Auxiliary Corps. After the country went to war, Army administrators at Jefferson Barracks processed as many as 1,000 people a day. In terms of population during the war years, the military post was the third largest city in Missouri. That influx forced the creation of tent cities to house all those servicemen. There were four training wings 
Each wing had four squadrons, each squadron had four companies, and each company had one to three thousand men, depending on whether they had received new men or just shipped out men. And they were in the tent cities. For the luckier soldiers, there were two-story wood frame barracks that housed 63 men each. Every building on the grounds, including these brick structures built in the 1890s, were put to use during the war. But when it ended, the Air Corps decided the post was too small to remain in use. Jefferson Barracks was decommissioned in June of 1946. A large portion was dedicated as a St. Louis County Historical Park in 1950. Today it serves to remind the public of the contributions of the men and women in uniform. Of the famous Americans who visited Jefferson Barracks, like President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, shown here during a visit in 1943. And those who've served here, including scores of men who went on to become generals during the Civil War. But the people whose lives have been touched by this site will never forget its significance. I've seen Jefferson Barracks go from a viable post to almost a ghetto to what it is today. I prefer it to be the way it is today, and I hope it'll last another two, three hundred years. And that's tonight's Living St. Louis. There's lots more stuff to see. It's on the website at KETC.org. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm Jim Kircher, and we'll see you next time. Funding for living